for these presentations. I, uh, the night before, I, I, I tell myself, why did I sign up for this? Like, it, this is kind of a lot of pressure. And I usually am a little bit nervous to start, but I promise I'm going to, you know, uh, relax and, uh, and you're going to enjoy this. So the presentation that I put together for you today, I wanted to do something that is a little bit more on a cutting edge of the marketing. Because, uh, you know, because just of the theme of the conference and stuff, I wanted to show you something that you're going to start seeing more and more. You're going to probably going to show you already companies that do this, but uh, if, as a marketer, we can predict where, uh, you know, where, our, where we as a society are going. We can then prepare ourselves and our businesses for those changes. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about pendulums, about tribes, and about layering. And I hope it is uh, interesting enough. So what kind of uh, Who's heard of Roy Williams, the Wizard of Bats? He was in Regina. John has, and I'm not actually a few of you. So, so John, John, uh, Roy Williams and Michael Drew are recently published a book called Pendulum. And what the Pendulum is about is about uh, baseball. There is a Pendulum. It is they did. They're talking about that our society shifts from me to we. So we shift from uh, you know more productive and, and uh, more selfish to more, uh, you know, fair and, and more uh, community oriented. And as, uh, you know, and, and they, they, their book is based on, on research by other scientists and so on. But what is interesting actually to, uh, for us to know is where we are now in the cycle in the shift in between we and me. And they say that that shift, uh, basically they, they talk about that joke. It throughout the book I and through their presentations, I had a hard time visualizing the pendulum. So instead of pendulum, I took liberty to change a little bit of concept into the sine wave, probably because of my electronics engineering background. But uh, I'm going to try to explain it this way. It may be a little bit easier. So if you look at the, in, in this axis here, uh, we, we have the years. And then we're shifting from me to we. So just as the pendulum shifts, we go from one side, we go where in me. And then every 40 years, we shift to we. So at the turn of the century, as a, as a society, I should also say that uh, you know different uh, different cultures are on different swings. So for example, uh, now as you're going to notice, we are going now towards being more we society. Uh, you can imagine that the China is not uh, that probably they had too much of the we, and they're probably being more selfish now. Uh, but we're going to talk about North American society. Uh, so you're going to notice that at the, at the beginning of the century there, this is a time of the, the big industrialist, you know, self-made man, you know, working hard. This is the, the people that Ayn Rand celebrates. And, uh, and, but then slowly from, you know, those, those early days of the century, we shifted towards being more, you know, uh, community oriented towards being more, you know, socially aware and stuff like that. And consequently, that was in a, around the Second World War, where you know everybody got together, everybody worked, everybody sent their sons to the war to fight evil Germans, and uh, won the war. And then what happened? Slowly, we got tired of this being all we, all us, uh, you know, community-based. And uh, towards the eighties, we shifted towards being again more selfish, which is probably time during the Reagan. Somehow, probably that was a time also of some you know, decent economy and everything else, but I won't necessarily go into that. And now we are going back, emerging from that time of we, we are going back to the time of we again. So I just want to talk about a few points here that are interesting. So right now, we are in, in uh, 2013, we are in the middle of the rise of we. So since uh, about 2003, uh, we started actually being more of a, you know, more community conscious and oriented, and we are at this period. And the only time that we were at the same uh, swing, I guess, of a pendulum, that we were going from me to be, was 80 years ago, over here. So that would be probably, you know, time of the Great Depression. And, uh, you know, maybe it is a, you know, consequence or not, but we are, you know, we probably just emerged not in Saskatchewan, but in the United States, they're just emerging off the depression. Now, I don't want to say that history repeats, but after that depression, there was a war. And uh, 
And uh, yeah, I, I don't know, Americans are fairly divided and there's a lot of instability, and I wouldn't be surprised if something does not end up in the war at the end of this uh, at the end of this cycle. But let's hope that won't happen. So so why you know the reason why I'm showing you this is to show you where your customers, how your customers are going to be thinking. Now this is not for everyone. Like for example, I am going to always be me. I am, you know, striving to to make a future for myself, and uh, I'm you know fairly. I work hard. I'm selfish, and I want to produce. And uh, I don't necessarily buy into all of this community stuff. But uh, I know that that may sound harsh, but I am an entrepreneur. And, uh, but I still have to understand where the majority of population is. So even if you don't agree with this trend, you still have to realize how you're going to run your business in the new environment. And that is very important. And I'm going to show you now some businesses that do this. Well, this is a, if you're interested in the map, this is how I got the formula to graph the curve. So the period is 80 years. And I wanted to access the cross at uh, 1923. So these are your new customers, the hipsters. Have you seen these guys? The, the reason I'm growing beer is because of November. It's not the fact that hipster, but I don't know. Actually, I'm going to tell you also, I don't necessarily believe in the free money. So to raise a, uh, money for November, my wife challenged me to raise $3,000. Since I don't want to be phoning my friends and asking to donate money, I'm working for free, or not for free, for donations. So I already moved somebody this weekend and I built a website for a donation. So if you need any work, I'll cook, I'll clean, I'll shovel snow <laughs> for donations to November. That's how me operates. <laughs> so, you know, this is, this, this is a you know, trend now, the, you know, and if we look at these guys, we're gonna think that they're shopping at Salvation Army and that they're very, you know, community or can be very socially conscious and all great things. But if you go to Koda, foods like this are probably three hundred and fifty dollars. These jeans are probably two fifty to two hundred and seventy dollars. Those plaid shirts are not from Salvation Army, they are about hundred and fifty dollars. So there is the money to be made for we. I sound so bad. Eh? So these are the me guys. So somehow I would be rather selling to these guys than to those guys. <laughs> so just I, I wanted to show you that uh, I just wanted to show you that it's not all bad. You know, we is okay. There is still business to be made from we. And uh, these are the houses that these guys live in. And uh, we have a you know a few developers here. So if we are now to build the houses like this in neighborhoods like this, that would not be appealing. To the guys like this. So now when we are planning our, you know, if you're a home builder or a developer, you're not going to be probably building any more neighborhoods like this because we are not interested anymore in double car garages. Maybe in Saskatchewan we are because it is cold and it is nice to park a car in the garage. But you know, at large, you know, this is not any more appealing. This is something that is more appealing. Yeah. Now, if you think this is not for Regina, this is hard to land here. <coughs> this is the home page of Harbor Landing. That's in Regina. So this is now what is what is you know hot. This is the beer that the new generation, the we generation drinks. Old style beer. But look what I found interesting here. Think local, drink local, shop local, be local. It sounds to me like advocacy. Right? It is social conscious beer. Still beer, somebody's making money on it. These are the shoes. I'm sorry the presentation is cut off. But this is you've probably heard of Tom's. Tom's is probably a pioneer at uh, yeah, at the basically socially conscious product. Uh, you know, and, and they what they do is for every pair of shoes that you buy, they uh, they donate a pair of shoes to the kids in Africa. Now I kind of look at it, I'm saying I'm paying for two pairs of shoes. I'm paying eighty dollars for forty pairs, forty dollar pair of shoes. No, I, I don't I don't I don't feel like that. But Tops is a, a very popular, very huge brand, and they sell a lot of shoes. And they probably are forty dollar shoes that they sell for eighty dollars. This is a local company. 
10 trees, you've probably seen them on the dragon's den. So for every piece of clothing that you buy, you can plant 10 trees. And what they are doing, uh, I think the plan is now that they're going to actually not just plant trees in Canada, but they're going to plant trees in the places where people shop. So they are offsetting the carbon footprint for the production and everything else. So now, they operate the business. These guys you know, know what they're doing. But also, they are making a difference in, uh, in our society. And that is what uh, you know, the companies do now. Now, this is uh, probably one of the first companies that started, and it, I don't think, it is called Me to Eat, but I don't think it's related to the pendulum shift, but really this company, it is all about, uh, you know, uh, volunteering, it's about helping others, and the way they do it is that they sell a product, so there is economy there. So this guy, I just wanted to show you that as a, as a society, it's a shift into more video communal, we can adjust our businesses to meet where our customers are going. And, you know, in Saskatchewan now, we may be a little bit, uh, you know, different than the rest of North America because they're very blessed with our resources and stuff. But still, we have to do business outside of Saskatchewan as well. So what do you think, Virgin? Is it the me or we company? I need a little bit of participation now. <laughs> Virgin, Richard Pratt, the self-made man. On the homepage of his website, he's got four pictures of himself. <laughs> we for sure, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me of course. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. I, I, I mean, who, who is who is to argue with the guy? But you know, I think that also if you if you look at that Pareto principle and that everything is divided in 80-20, if he's marketing 20%. Of the niche, you know, that's where you have the niche. But now the interesting thing is, I, I think that this is as clearly a meat company as it can be. I don't know how they're going to do transition planning with this. He decides to retire or if he dies in one of his adventures, but I don't think he's concerned about that. Uh, on their website, they have Virgin Tribe. So what they're trying to do, I don't know, somebody had a smart marketing idea and they probably told them that the society is going more social and everything and they need to create their own tribe. So Virgin, I think they kind of pasted the, 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 the we onto a very me company. Or maybe they're changing, who knows. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the brand tribes. So what brand tribes are, it is uh, uh, marketing to and through our most loyal customers. And this is why, you know, uh, social media is, uh, you know, very, very popular tool among, among the, uh, you know, marketers because it allows us to connect with our customers, most loyal customers. So what are the brands? Uh, what are these brands that you know that people are very loyal to? Oh, Tim Hortons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tim Hortons is incredible. Coke. NASCAR. Coke. Yeah. NASCAR. Um, um, which one? Any of your clothing stores, Tommy Hilfiger to I've seen you take any of them. Okay, yeah, you can't yeah. buy a shirt without their logo all over it. Okay, yeah, yeah. But the, I, this is more who has the big following? Who is, uh, you know, who, you know, which are the companies uh, that people really know, you know, was to die for, right? Nike, Nike is, uh, you know, it's, it is, and Nike is really subtle, right? Nike is, if you look at Nike, Nike never goes and says, we are social, you know, come join our social network and everything. What people do, because they actually do it a little bit, uh, I guess, in a little bit more elegant way. So some of the companies that I thought of was John Deere. Yeah. You know, people are almost so religious about John Deere. We are working with uh, with a company that uh, you know sells a uh, new Holland. And you know, it is uh, it is a battle because you know if you bring a blue tractor in a, in a green community, <laughs> I don't know. I would maybe rather be in Belfast, but. <laughs> uh, I'd rather push a Chevy than drive a Ford. You've probably seen this. You know, uh, Coke. Somebody mentioned Coke. This guy, Apple. You know, and uh, so talking about Apple, do you remember when Samsung and uh, uh, Samsung lost to Apple in, in uh, the court battle, and they're supposed to pay Samsung one billion dollars for copyright infringements? This is uh, I think two three months ago. So what I was interested in, not necessarily all the blog posts and stuff like that. I was interested in the, in the comments that people are making to blog posts. 
So I pulled up some of those comments, and I'm going to read a few just uh, to show you. Now, these people are posting these comments through their Facebook. So you actually are really, you don't have like, a, you know, like a fake name and stuff like that. You really are putting that not just for this blog post, but all of your friends and family can see what you're saying. And this guy is commenting and saying, hey man, I own Samsung Galaxy S2, S3, and Samsung Galaxy 10 tablet, and I simply love them all. Can't personally stand Apple, LOL. <coughs> and then this uh, girl is saying Apple is the best, and this guy is saying, hit the road, Jack, don't you come back, no more, no more, no more, no more. So, who does that? <laughs> you know, people who are very loyal to their brands. So, um, you know, branding is uh, not law. Actually, let me tell you a joke. Can I tell a joke? Okay, so it's a slightly religious, but you know, don't. Uh, so so the man, man gets stopped in Belfast by a gang. And they ask him, are you Catholic or a Protestant? And he's like, that's the one I get the answer wrong. So she's like, I'm an atheist. And they're like, are you Protestant atheist or Catholic atheist? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the, brand, uh, the, 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 the brand tribalism is not rational, it's not logical. It is just something that we feel. We can't explain why we like Coke better than uh, we like uh, Pepsi, or why we like Apple better than we like Samsung and stuff, but we do. And, and, and especially now, it is important because I explained to you that we are shifting now towards me, and we want to belong. We don't belong anymore to service clubs. You know, very few young people join the service clubs anymore. Where we belong now is we belong to brands. And now you, as uh, you know, the, the business owners, as the managers, as the marketers, you need to figure out how you're going to provide a vehicle for your most loyal customers to belong to your tribe. <coughs> and uh, McDonald's tribe. So McDonald's figured out, you know, uh, the social media is kind of the cool thing, we can save a lot of money probably with, uh, with using social media and just with tweeting and stuff like that. So let's tell people to share their McDonald's stories. And they kind of came up with a little Twitter hashtag, make these stories, and they sent it to the world to share the stories. Now, if there is probably more controversial brand than McDonald's in the world, I would like to argue that. but. There is probably, if you think of, there's a lot of McDonald's haters. You know, there's a lot of fast food chains, but they probably are the leader. And whenever you want to attack the fast food, you're gonna attack McDonald's. There are movies made against McDonald's. There were documentaries made. There were blog posts written. So you can imagine when McDonald's opened themselves up for discussion, what happened. So within hours, the basic McDonald's had to take. Uh, a, McDonald's stories down, but because it is in a social universe, it stays. People kept going, and then later on, what it happened, and they actually named to uh, MC Fail, and you know, and McDonald's Fail, and stuff like that. So basically, I'm gonna just read you a couple of these. One time, uh, one time I walked into McDonald's, and I, I could smell type 2 diabetes floating in the air, and I threw up. <laughs> That's what somebody posted about their McDonald's story. I won't read it the other ones, but they're going to show you the bottom. It says, make these stories. McDonald's uh, uh, scalds baby chickens alive for nuggets. Meet the reality here reality here, and take the action. McCrokey.com. So somebody went and created a website against McDonald's. And you know what they were doing? They were selling t-shirts. They were raising money to fight McDonald's. It turned out it was a PETA. People for Apple chicken animals. So you know, they, they do things a little bit more controversially, but it probably worked. Now what was really, really impressive, McDonald's did not retreat back. They actually called their Canadian friends McDonald's Canada. And you've recently seen this. McDonald's took a step back, probably did a lot of thinking, figured out what went wrong. They knew that social media, that the we generation is not going away. That they need to get the we generation back into their restaurants. And uh, you know, McDonald's has been working. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm quite foodie. I really like to, you know, kind of watch my diet and I, you know, buy organic and stuff. 
But I've been noticing, you know, that McDonald's is changing their menus. They are pushing healthy options. Like when we were this summer in Sarajevo, McDonald's looked like a Starbucks. Like it was incredible how modern McDonald's looked. And uh, and and then they decided that they were ready to start this campaign. So what they did is they invited. You probably are familiar with this campaign by now. Probably seen it on TV and stuff. But I'll I'll just kind of give you an overview. What McDonald's said is, they are with your questions. They are asking people to, you know, basically telling people, ask us the questions about your food, and we're going to be very glad to answer. So they really opened themselves up. They said, you know, go ahead, ask the questions, ask the tough ones, and we're going to do our best job to answer. And people really did. People, you know, and, and they, they created a website, and this website is linked. When you ask questions, they linked to your Facebook or Twitter, so that they can actually connect back with you. So it is very open. It's out there in the public. And what McDonald's really made itself vulnerable. But you know, it could not be worse than that fail. So you know, I guess that was a little bit safe. So uh, what they did is they first ran this campaign on the social media, and uh, you know, through basically Twitter and Facebook. And uh, from July till October, they had about 6,000 submissions. So with those 6,000 submissions, they actually went and they tried really to answer questions. And they, they have really, really friendly tone and they are really witty and funny. And I'm going to show you one example. Uh, but what they did also, they created 15 videos. It's kind of like, a, do you remember Dove uh, commercial where they show you how they Photoshop women for commercials? Well, they did that with the burgers because people ask one of the questions was, how does your cheeseburger, you know, look different in a restaurant than than in a, in a picture? So they said, like, I'll show you. You know, in a restaurant, it takes us 60 seconds. We've got to make it in 60 seconds. You don't want to wait four hours for us to make it perfect. You probably cannot pay for it. But then they went and they showed you how they make a burger in, in the basically in a, in a photo studio. And that now is the number four most popular Canadian made YouTube video. So just from you know this, this one video. And uh, I, I like this question. This Richard guy asked the question, do hamburgers grow in a burger patch and love to be eaten? <laughs> So, you know, the, I, these people are having fun. So they said that, you know, the McDonald's answers, sit down with you. Do you think it's time to have a little talk about how hamburgers are really made? And then they're going to talk about how burgers are made, you know, almost like you would be talking to kids about how babies are made and stuff. And, and you know, they are really having fun. And they changed this situation from really, really bad last year to like, this is now. And because it was so successful on social media, they decided to boost it. And the reason why I'm talking to you now about this, this is because a lot of people think that advertise, uh, that social media is your replacement for advertising. And I don't think so. You know, maybe it's going to be one day, but I don't think you could just create a Twitter account and and pull out your little post ads or your you know radio buy or your TV buy and stuff and. Uh, you know, Look Matters is, uh, is uh, a you know, marketing agency, but we, we don't necessarily sell advertising. But we have to advise our customers what is most effective vehicle for them. And we, we always caution our customers. Just because you have a, you know, a Twitter account, you most likely still need to advertise. If, you, if your business, you know, if it fits your business model, if it fits your strategy. But uh, I'm going to show you how well it worked for McDonald's. So basically from June to October, they had 6,000 questions, and they made those initial 15 videos. They could share that. But what they did then is bought the TV, and, and they did that in September 24th. In just one week of TV, they compiled additional 4,000. They got the additional 4,000 questions. So that's how powerful TV is, and I'm going to show you later why. And, uh, and yeah, I told you already that this video has become now the fourth most popular Canadian made video on YouTube. So this is, this is why it worked. So this is not the exact size, but I'm, you know, I tried to kind of order these, uh, you know, I think you've heard about the marketing file. So, so I tried to order the media in a, in a, in a kind of, uh, how would I say, 
uh, according to the reach. So TV probably has the widest reach. And, uh, and then the radio, newspaper, billboard, jobs, and magazines, all of your other advertising, and then probably YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Okay? So if you imagine now, if you're just uh, advertising something, you should not advertise on social media, by the way. It's okay. <coughs> but if you're pushing your message, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, if you're pushing your message just to Twitter, look how wide that is. And this is probably actually not even to scale. But if you imagine you're, you know, you're probably tweeting to maybe 500 or 1,000 your followers, or even 10,000 your followers if you have, but they also don't necessarily see. They don't, they're not all on all the time. So you're sending a message to a very small population. While if you need to reach a wide, you know, large population, TV is probably your most effective medium to do that. Now again, you know, talk to your marketing experts. They have different strategies. I'm just showing you, I'm just trying to illustrate why the TV worked for McDonald's so well. It worked because, you know, there was there was a wide reach, there was a good message, you know, and, and that people wanted to engage. So I, I mentioned something about uh, you should not advertise on social media. Uh, who doesn't use social media uh, for their business here? Who uses? Everybody uses social media for their business? Yeah. So, so you, basically, the reason why the social media is about uh, it is a two-way conversation. It's about creating a conversation. It's not about pushing. We say it's it's not push, it's pull. So it is very similar to actually having people, you know, uh, mingle at the business at that, and a sales guy coming in with a business card and saying, "Hey, buy a carpet for me." You know, that that would be uh, similar to advertising on social media. So just there is a different content there. On social media, you engage people in quick conversation. We offer them helpful advices and create, you know, your brand followers and, and, and you know, you get them to join your tribe. So that's why we don't advertise. Now also, the, I wanted to show you how McDonald's is changing. This is the, the future look of McDonald's. So they are adjusting everything from the product to the in-store experience to their advertising mediums. And this is how, uh, like, I am pretty sure that McDonald's would not be like one of those companies that were wiped after, you know, years and years. So, you know, we've heard of many companies who've been in business for 100 years and now they've been wiped, wiped because of the market changes and stuff. They are adapting to the new market. They are proactively changing themselves and I'm certain they're gonna survive. Rival of the fittest. <coughs> That's going to conclude my presentation. I hope that, uh, you know, I, 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 this is what I've covered because of the timing and everything I, I've skipped through. But uh, Pendulum talks about our generational shift. The tribes talk about our need to belong. And your company could fulfill that need. And then we're talking about mark, uh, layering. You have to really layer advertising media. Are there any questions? So I, I, I'm curious uh, on your upside down pyramid there, you know, there's so many people that, that seem to be focusing so much on the bottom three right now. When it comes to, you know, you talk to them, they say, well, yeah, we're just, we're doing social media, we're doing social media. Mm -hmm. um, and I always thought that reach was a lot further a lot deeper than what you're projecting here. So what's the basis of your your thought there that social media is so small? Okay, so uh, the question was, uh, how did I base, uh, why did I base social media so small in terms of uh, you know TV, radio, and newspaper and such? And uh, I, I didn't, didn't do any research on this. I'm basing it on the experiences that uh, you know we have as a company. And uh, I should say that if there was a depth also to this, that depth of engagement, the social media would be very deep. But uh, you know, compared to TV, that is very, they will be very thin. But we are here. We are reaching. This is just the reach. With TV, we're going to reach a very large audience, as opposed to on social media. So, for example, if uh, if a Harvard had uh, 
uh, you know, Facebook page, you will have so many followers that would have to like you on Facebook and follow to see your messaging, which would be quite a bit smaller than than uh, you know what you could actually get from TV advertising. I get you. Right. So, like for example, I personally have you know maybe 1,200 followers on Twitter, and I probably you know have you know more followers than than the average person does. Well, still, that is only 1,200 people. If I needed to let everybody know something very quickly, I would probably choose something on the above. How many of you listen to the radio on the way to here? How many of you check your Twitter account? How about Facebook? There's my research. <laughs> So the question is, are people having PBR? Will the TV change? I actually have to um, tell you that I haven't had TV, like a cable or antenna or something, since 2011, 2001. So I've been TV free for, you know, quite quite uh, quite some time now. And uh, you know, but I still, uh, you know, know that TV does reach most of the people if we do need to reach them. Now it is changing, and. The way we now consume, you know, the, the media is, you know, through YouTube, through through Netflix, and so on. So, what advertisers are now doing, they're creating shows. There's a number of shows that you're going to notice that there's no more anymore advertised by, but the whole show is created by the product. Uh, you're going to notice a lot of shows that people don't Google when they go on search engines. They Bing. Who uses Bing? Nobody uses Bing, nobody uses Google, but the TV shows somehow they're using Bing. Uh, there is a show with, uh, there is a show about, uh, you know, uh, losing weight and juicing and stuff, and every juicer in the whole show is Brazil. Well, it's definitely the whole show is made by Brazil. They actually made now, made now whole shows. Schmernoff has their own, you know, show. And so that that is now what advertisers are doing. But that, absolutely, this is changing. Uh, if I was in the TV business, if, if I was in the newspaper business, I would definitely think now how I'm going to you know, stay in business. And I would be probably doing something similar that McDonald's is doing to look how I can reinvent myself. Right. The other uh, <clears throat> point about TV and radio uh, is there, we're in the 500 channel universe. And, uh, you know, you asked how many people were listening to the radio. But how many of us were listening to the same radio station? Okay. Right? And in my case, I drove in this morning, I was listening to satellite radio, there is no advertising. Yeah. Right? So, uh, again, I guess I would question uh, how wide the reach is of a particular TV station or mm -hmm. a particular radio station as, you know, as a media choice. So, it, again, it really comes down to targeting, right? Yeah. Is it more effective to target your audience on uh, YouTube or, or Twitter, uh, or if you invest in the wrong TV station or the wrong <coughs> station, you really haven't reached your market after all. So, did, did, did you hear the, the comment that Jacqueline or should I repeat? Uh, I'll just paraphrase again that you know, because we have so many, we have 500 channels, we have uh, you know, the satellite radio that doesn't have advertising and so on. And, and, and the comment was now, how do we how do we really pick a medium or is really TV and TV and TV? So and, and Jean made a you know a very very good comment to that we need to really figure out what are our customers are watching, where they are, and we need to choose those mediums based on our audience. And that's you know the, so you don't ask them just to buy, you know, you, you don't you, you don't target hipsters on a new stock radio. Just don't. You 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 know you have to really know your audience to pick the medium. Now I'm also not suggesting don't drop the social media. Social media, uh, the this the top part is the gateway to social media. This is where we want our audience to connect, but we need to get them to here, and we can accelerate getting them to here through getting them through the wider, uh, you know, wider targeting. 
if it is appropriate for your product and your brand. This is where we engage and this is where we keep them. But don't, people don't necessarily right away start liking the brand and so on just because you're on social media. They need to somehow hear about you. They need to experience the product. Kind of building on that, you touched on tribes being irrational in some of their reasoning and stuff like that. So how can we bring rational thought to an irrational loyalty to oh. maximize it? The rational thought to irrational loyalty? Well, you said that some of their loyalty, we don't understand why they have the loyalty to Mac, to Mac or mm -hmm. Harvey Davidson. They just have it, and that you can't change it no matter what. Yeah. So how would you kind of use other Well, Well, I'll tell you what the reason for us. So, so the, uh, the question was, how do we now, because I, I said that the, you know, the loyalty and, and tribalism is, is not necessarily logical, it's not necessarily, we don't make, uh, you know, it's not necessarily, we don't make it on logical, rational decisions. Uh, you know, it is something, it's just like the way we follow the path, it's not always logical, right? Uh, what McDonald's did is, they did not try to convert the McDonald's haters. They were targeting fence seaters, you know? So you don't necessarily, you, you don't bring people higher than a full swing. You know, there are a few people. But what you really are trying to do, you're trying to really uh, bring on your fence sitters or people who are somewhat loyal, you want to engage them more. So you can't, you can't convert to everyone. If you try, then you're going to probably waste too much energy and you're going to forget about your loyal customers. Actually, after reading, it's funny, after reading all of this and watching this campaign, I, I haven't been to McDonald's since my son did not want to go anymore to play structure, which was probably since he was five and he's 13 now. And I really one day considered McDonald's as an option for a quick stop to drop you know, something to eat. I didn't go, I resisted. But they almost got me, so I need to consider. <laughs> did that answer your question? No. Yeah. Well, Where's the website on that? Per your individual website on that? Is it below social media? Well, uh, I, I use this, uh, you know, the because their website uses is built on 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 a Twitter and Facebook. So, but it would be it would be somewhere around here too. Right? People would uh, people would probably depends. Like I said, I didn't actually use this as as an exact science. I just use it to illustrate the the reach that different mediums have. So just like it would be very inappropriate to advertise here and to always push your message. You've seen probably in your social media channel people that just try to sell, 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 and then you just block them or you unfollow them. Uh, you know, that is the same way it's not it's not appropriate to advertise. That's why you need to use different mediums to get people to your social network. And I mean, if you're a small B2B business and if all of your customers know you by your first name and stuff, you don't need all of this. You just need to do good work. You know, look matters does not advertise. We we are you know work on in, in, in our local market and uh, we don't need to advertise. But when we need to convince people to recycle their electronics or to clean up the landfills from tires, we use pretty much all of this to, to reach different audiences. The scratch and scrap tire and has the NS sweet the circuit and they are our customers. That's why I was using those two examples. But you know, we have to use all of the different mediums to, to reach different you know audiences. If you work in in northern Saskatchewan, you know, uh, you, you chances that you may you are not gonna be using social media. The, the point of this last, um, the point of this last uh, part of layering is really that your mediums need to work together. You hand customer from one medium to another. And once you get engaged, you know they're your loyal customer, they're part of your tribe. I really appreciate all of the engaging questions. You guys are making me work. One last question. Go ahead. Um, you talked about McDonald's. Where do you see on a, on a spectrum? Where do you see Rim? Rim? Yeah. I think they gonna be gone. <laughs> I I uh, 
I just don't think, I think that they, uh, you know, has anybody, does anybody have shares in red? <laughs> sunk cost is sunk cost. Um, like, I, I really, that is a good example of a company that did not, that chose not to uh, change themselves. They, they chose, uh, I think, almost deliberately not to do anything about, you know, market and not to adapt. And uh, if you don't adapt, it's a cycle of life evolution. If you don't adapt, you're going to be gone. And nobody's going to be sorry for you. And uh, it's harsh, but even when the, the two CEOs were forced to, to you know, resign and hire a CEO, they hired their own employee that they could control. You know, I, may be, I may be a little bit opinionated on that, but who, who is striving to buy a BlackBerry now? Very few of us. You know, we want iPhones and Androids. And they had the market. They were the leader at one point, and they stopped innovating. They got complacent. And all of us have to adapt all the time. 